Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank everyone here for being here today. We are Burlington Bio. My name is Otto Berkmiller. And I'm Alexander Rubin. Is lab-grown meat ethical? And if so, should Arizona invest in the future of lab-grown meat? That is the question we are here today to answer. We are Burlington Bio, and our philosophy is that the future of food is not between, is not between choosing between um, traditional and technology. It's about finding harmonization between the two to nourish humanity. Now that you know who we are, what will we be discussing today? First, we seek to understand the current state of Arizona as a result of the impacts of the traditional meat industry. We also seek to outline some key stakeholders and how we will approach their legal, financial, and ethical concerns, all to help us answer the question, should Arizona invest in the future of lab-grown meat? To answer this, we will assess our ethics matrix to make sure we are acting in the best interest of all stakeholders, and we will also fill out the pillars of common good using our 4E blueprint, making sure we are environmentally sustainable, economically viable, socially equitable, and acting ethically for all. We hope this will bring you to the final decision that the state of Arizona should invest in the future of lab-grown meat. Now, why do we care? So currently in the world, approximately 35% of the population is expected to increase in the future, and that will require approximately 2% of the resources, which we simply don't have at the moment. 14.5% of greenhouse gas emissions are emitted from livestock farming, and over 77% of the agricultural land used for livestock farming is or for agriculture is specifically livestock farming, but it only makes up 18% of the total calories that the world consumes. Now, to tie it back to Arizona, there's some, a few numbers we want to pay, direct your attention to. First, between 2017 and 2022, almost 40,000 acres of harvested cropland were lost due to soil degradation, drought, and other impacts of climate change. Additionally, the average age of a farmer in Arizona is nearing retirement, meaning there's not a wide pool of next generation farmers ready to continue this industry. This all supports the findings of a 2023 University of Arizona report that says that the future of the industry in Arizona is not sustainable due to the drying climate and traditional practices. Now, in order to make sure we are acting ethically, we have assessed three different frameworks using our ethics, ethics matrix. We assess them on four criteria, including stakeholder consideration, contributions to harmonization between tradition and technology, long-term viability, making sure that the way we act now will not negatively impact us in the future and will benefit us, and additionally, applicability to Arizona. With so many environmental factors and key stakeholders at play, we feel that the common good framework is the best route to follow, as utilitarianism and virtue ethics leave a little bit too much gray area where certain minority groups within our stakeholders may end up losing out. This also works perfectly with our guiding philosophy that the future of food is not about choosing between tradition and technology, but harmonization between the two to nourish humanity. This brings us to the pillars of the common good, which we'll fill out using our 4E blueprint. And we see that by bridging the gap between past and future through adaptation of tradition and responsible innovation of technology, we will find the common good for all of our stakeholders. Our stakeholders include end consumers looking for a safe and affordable product, traditional meat companies who do not want to lose out on business and want to have a positive conversion to this new industry. Additionally, governmental bodies. We want to follow and support all positive legislation for lab-grown meat. And additionally, hopefully get some funding from the governments. Also, indigenous communities. Governor Hobbs has made it clear that initiatives to support and hear indigenous voices are crucial to all policymaking here in Arizona. Also, cultivated meat companies looking to make a responsible future profit. And finally, earth and the animal advocates. There is no future for any agriculture if we do not address the impacts of climate change now. This brings us to our recommendations. We suggest creating an inclusive regulatory environment encompassing lab-grown meat regarding further inspection regulation and certain restrictions on labeling so consumers know what they're buying. Additionally, providing research grants and tax breaks to incentivize this new industry and encourage conversion from traditional farmers to better practices. Also, utilizing the ample amount of solar power as renewable energy to support the future of this new industry. And finally, leveraging the expertise of the president of this university, Suresh Garamella, who as you may know is the former president of UVM and at UVM he was able to drive research and funding in order to get important projects off the ground and we think that his expertise could also help revitalize the reputation of the university in Tucson. Now for the financial considerations. So for an industry outlook looking forward there is an expected compounding annual growth rate of 45 and a half percent going forward from now to the year 2032 and in the year 2032 we expect to be at a value of around 81 billion dollars and we in Arizona want a chunk of that. And if you look here, you see a distribution of all 174 companies around the world um, relating to where they are geographically. 
Next, in terms of the outlook for the state of Arizona, specifically, for every 500,000 metric tons, it, uses, it requires about 5,000 laborers to do such a thing, which is equivalent proportionately to the current status quo of the traditional, farmer, or traditional farming in the state of Arizona, meaning the transition would be smooth and possible. In terms of investments, Arizona has put a lot of investments into clean energy jobs and renewable energies um, themselves, and this creates a positive feedback loop helping us get closer to hitting the 150,000 clean energy jobs by 2030, both supporting, both supporting renewable energy in Arizona and the cultivated meat industry. Now, in terms of making this an economically viable enterprise, we need to improve public perception. The Good, Institute, Good Food Institute has reported that 45% of Americans are willing to try cultivated meat for many of these reasons. The main ones being curiosity, environmental concern, which we especially want to utilize for younger demographics who uh, generationally have more interest in technological innovation and sustainability. In order to improve public perception, we need to improve the taste and texture of this meat and make it a viable substitute to traditional farming meat. Also utilize behavioral science to make sure people understand the moral, moral and ethical impacts of their transition and educating consumers on the science. Now in order to help educate consumers, we want to look to figures such as Jose Andres, who is an early investor and adopter of cultivated meat, serving it in his DC restaurant. He invited vegetarian reviewers as well as reviewers from certain cultural or religious groups that have dietary restrictions regarding the per processing and production of their meat, which will help those communities see that this is an alternate solution for them. Also, his celebrity status offers a chance to learn about this product from an company, from an individual who people may be able to connect with more than a company. Now let's move on to some legal considerations. So currently the FDA and the USDA work together. The FDA sees and oversees the entire cultivated meat process up to the point of harvesting, and that is where they transfer it over to the USDA and specifically the FSIS. And then going down to the bottom, you see grants. This is the most important part in the current state in order to drive the industry moving forward. And a lot of the grants are used by the federal government. But specifically, we need to look towards also private investors such as Tyson or the Bill, Bill Gates Foundation, which has had a significant impact in funding. In terms of opportunities, um, we want to collaborate with Suresh Garamella in order to improve the amount of grants and funding we receive for research. We also think it's important to provide a structure to the system in Arizona by having proper label requirements and definitions so we are transparent to consumers who want to have our product. And we also want to have an oversight committee to help with the USDA and the FDA and take some weight off their shoulders. And in terms of the targets for Arizona, the, we want to achieve the Clean Air and Water Act specifically and the other ones as well. And how are we going to do this? Well, the nice thing about cultivated meat is it reduces significantly the amount of resources used in the process as, com as compared to traditional meat markets, which will help us get all of those impacts. And in terms of patents, look directly at the patent benefits. That's where we're looking for the short term. Patents allow these, com these companies to have the competitive edge over competitors, and this is vital when it comes to getting investments from private investors. Moving on to some ethical considerations, native nations in Arizona, 50% of them have unresolved water rights issues, and 30% of the Navajo reservation, the largest one, has a lack of access to running water. Despite this, the total number of indigenous Arizona producers has risen over those five year span because of the generations of experience and knowledge in regenerative farming practices and earth first practices. And with 58% of Arizona farmers having or being of indigenous descent, we want to make sure we highlight them. This can be incentivizing through incentivizing traditional regenerative growing practices and reduce water usage, working with the governor on tribal state partnerships to address water rights issues, and utilizing the Native Nations Institute to have educational outreach programs so all future farmers will be able to learn the right techniques for the future. We also have some impacts for traditional farmers. Again, we want to focus on partnerships and working to make sure they are included. This leads us back to the pillars of common good, and we want to make sure that we succeeded in filling this harmonization with environmental transitioning to regenerative farming, as well as reduced environmental impacts, will lead to combating climate change and resource depletion. Economically, we need to see sustainable efforts in traditional agriculture through incentives, and additionally, having research grants and introduction to markets to create profit for lab-grown meat companies, which will help secure the future of the food systems for a growing population with two thriving industries. Next, for equity, proper integration of native voices and traditional farmers, along with appropriate regulation of labeling for end consumers and university research programs, will help make sure that all stakeholder concerns and voices are heard in a just and fair way, and they will all be represented. Additionally, improved practice and environmental considerations, combined with responsible innovation and focus on stakeholder needs, will help lead us to successful integration of cultural values and humane food production for the future. 
Thank you very much for your time. We are Burlington Bio, and we hope that you will see harmony between tradition and technology. Should lab grown meat be developed and scaled up if the long term consequences on public health and the environment remain uncertain? So, in order to address address both the health concerns and the environmental concerns of the lab-grown meat industry, this is all key through economies of scale, which will allow production to move from a pharmaceutical standpoint to a food grade standpoint. This will address food and the health concerns by not having to use the pharmaceutical grade chemicals and instead using food grade process processes and uh, other techniques. And additionally, in terms of the environmental impact, through scaling up and through moving from that pharmaceutical standpoint to a food grade standpoint, it will help lower the cost of energy, allow more access and use of renewable energy, because there won't be the high intensity environment of the lab. And through specification into just lab grown meat within labs, then they will reduce energy costs and become more environmentally friendly moving forward. Thank you.